This video was made especially for you. We are celebrating 100 000 subscribers on our channel, and I want to sincerely thank everyone who watches our videos. Without you, this channel wouldn't exist. Today I want to tell you that God will open paths in your life that you never imagined. God is a way maker. You've probably heard that, right? In Isaiah 43 verses 16 to 21, it says, This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together. And they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. I have witnessed this facet of God many times in my life. I'm just describing the way they helped me through one of my hardest times. I'm just describing, um, this is the article that I'm writing and I'm using to describe this specific job. It's a job that I did sometime in the 80s and the reason for that is I didn't have a career. I didn't have a job, but unlike many others doing this job, I wanted to continue it. My hands, but we are always in God's hands. And as it says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. When life knocks you down and throws you into a situation that seems to be your end, remember that God always makes a way. When you have traveled the paths of life and reached the end of the road, remember that God will always open a way for you. Worry, uncertainty and fear will not easily disappear. You need to decide and affirm to yourself no matter what happens. I will believe in God. Lewis tells us that Christianity asserts that every individual human being is a divine masterpiece thought of from all eternity for a unique place in the divine economy. When I say a unique place, I mean a place that literally cannot be occupied by anyone else. And Christianity also asserts that the relationship of each soul to God is and must be an infinitely private and unique relationship. God has individual attention for each soul as if that soul were the only soul created. He does not get distracted. He does not get tired. He not only knows and loves each soul, but also shapes and guides it, creating paths and opportunities specifically for that soul. This is one of the great mysteries of the Christian faith, that a God who is infinitely great can also be infinitely small. That he can be the Lord of all creation and at the same time be completely present with a single human being. That is why we can trust that, even when we are lost or confused, God is creating a path for us, a path that may be different from any other path he has ever created. He is the author of our lives and as such, is constantly writing new stories, opening new paths, and guiding us in directions we could never have imagined. Your adversary, the devil, will not stop trying to keep you in the same situation. If you start feeling that you overcame worry yesterday, he will bring it back today as he constantly wants to bring you down. In Screw Tape Letters tells us that, in periods of total desolation, human beings have the opportunity to grow in a courage that would not have been possible in times of peace. Faculties not employed in pleasure must be used to resist despair. Faith can be practiced, learned and strengthened precisely where it seems least likely. This is the great opportunity, but you must ensure that he never sees it that way. Present him with visions of terrible possible futures instead of more feasible and real ones. Stimulate in his mind the foolish presumption that his decision is more important than he is and that his failures are final. But remember that all victories, no matter how small, are cumulative. When you feel hopeless and helpless, don't forget that your God is a way maker. He will make a way through the desert and miraculously create new doors where you feel all doors open have been closed against you. As Psalm 34 verse 19 tells us, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Listen to these words from King David in Psalm 121 verses 1-2, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. There is one being who gives help. 
That being is God. Help may also come from men, or you may help yourself. But the question for you today is, who will help you when the only helpers you know are in trouble? The most infallible help of all time comes from the Lord. Many of us are used to seeking help from our friends, our family, and everywhere except from the Lord. Your help does not come from the mountains or the hills. It comes from the Lord. God can use or not use anyone he wants to help you. That is why you should not cultivate the habit of trying to decide for him how to help he should resolve your situations. When the Israelites were facing the Red Sea, remember that God did not provide them with a cargo ship or a boat. No one expected the instructions he gave to Moses. He parted the waters and made them cross on dry ground instead of navigating. God is still in the business of making roads in the sea. I want you to know that no one can predict God. Some of your frustrations come from the fact that you have a particular route you expect God to follow. Meanwhile, God is calling your attention elsewhere. Stop trying to predict God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. These are verses 8 and 9 of Isaiah 55. But you may wonder why I am talking so much about worry and fear. It is because these two have the capacity to make anyone forget God's ability. As it says in Matthew 6 verse 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In truth, worry will make you want to predict God. This has caused many people to miss God's movement in their lives. He will make a way for you and illuminate all the dark situations around you. But you need to believe that. Isaiah 43 verse 16 says, This is what the Lord says, He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. Beloved, doing something new, performing a miracle, and making a way are all God's business. Your part is to trust and obey. If he says you should not worry or fear, then you must trust him and choose not to worry. That sour relationship will be restored. You will get the job you always wanted. You will get into college. You will find a soulmate and get married. And you will be free of debt. God is capable of doing these things and much more. He has done it before and he has not changed. Build your hope on him. Trust him to make a way. You see, we all go through difficult situations in life, most of which we cannot get rid of because what we face is greater than us. I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of a situation that fooled God? You should reflect on that. For in Jeremiah 32 verse 27, it tells us, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Unpleasant situations that last a long time have the capacity to make someone feel abandoned and forgotten. I heard someone say some time ago, I have heard and read in the scriptures that nothing is impossible for God, but my situation has lasted so long that I have to believe that some things are simply too difficult for God to do. It is normal to feel that way. Psalm 34 verse 18 tells us, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And I know you will change the narrative when the Lord intervenes because I have personally tasted his good will and many others have experienced him in different dimensions. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 4.1.10 God intervenes not when we want, but in his own time, which is the most appropriate time. He never leaves his children abandoned by the roadside. He will guide you in his strength and lead you to your place of habitation because you are his redeemed. Let that sink into your mind. God will not send you on a journey alone. He will guide the way and walk beside you. Lewis tells us that we are not tempted beyond what we can bear. God is faithful and when we are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that we can endure it. When he sent the prophet Elijah, Elijah thought he would starve but God miraculously fed him through an angel and even a raven. Remember the wife of one of the prophet's sons in the scripture? Listen to what it tells us in 2 Kings 4 verses 1 to 7. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you tell me what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. 
Elisa said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterward shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Was it God who sent the angel to Elijah? Yes. Was it God who sent the raven to feed him? Yes. Was it God who made the widow's oil? Flow until it filled every borrowed jar. Yes, yes, it was. Was it God who did all these things? Yes, he was. He made a way where all hope was lost. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What makes you think he cannot do that now in your situation? God says in Isaiah 46 verse 10, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times. What is still to come, I say. My purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. From the east I summon a bird of prey, from a far off land a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. It is God who said he will make a way. So why are you trying to cut paths and take on his role? To get out of God's way and let him do what he said he would do. You cannot fulfill the mandate he gave you on your own. He knows that you cannot respond to his call and be effective in the place of your designation without him making a way for you. What God said about you will break your neck if you try to do it with your own strength. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. The world is full of activities and evil desires that seek to draw men to eternal damnation. When you are in Christ, you face more of these fierce temptations, but God still does not abandon you. As it says in Romans 8 verse 26, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. He stays with you and teaches you to say no to sin. He strengthens you with his word and empowers you in the place of prayer to face all the temptations to come. And remember what 2 Timothy 2 verse 22 encourages, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. I want you to know that every man faces temptations and therefore you are not alone. Lewis tells us that faith, in the sense in which I am here, using the word, is the art of holding on to things. Your reason has once accepted, in spite of your changing moods. If you are being tempted to give up on your faith, someone has faced that same temptation before. In the Bible, Job faced it, and many people faced it after him. James 1 verses 2 to 4 tell us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. I want you to pay attention to the phrase that says, He will also provide a way out. It is God who provides that way out. The way out of that abusive relationship you have just been saved from may not be another relationship but staying alone with God and being healed. If you start another relationship because you feel lonely, you may get hurt again and not be able to get out of it. Sometimes God creates a way out for you, only for you to misinterpret the way he created and go back to what he is trying to free you from. And remember how Psalm 32 verse 8 encourages us. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. In essence, I am trying to say that God is always making a way. But are you always ready to see and follow that way? Or do you use the patterns of how he operated in the past to misinterpret his future actions? Don't fall into that trap, dear. God's ways are not our ways. His ways are unpredictable. You need to believe to receive the manifestation of his promises, as it says in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Be encouraged in the Lord. He will guide you. Have faith in the one who created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. 
the one who strategically structured the face of the earth, suspended between the waters above and the sea below. Is this same creator incapacitated to make a way for you? No, meditate on this and let your heart be encouraged today. Isaiah 43 verse 19 shows. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams, in the wasteland, and then Lewis tells us this, look for yourself and you will find in the long run only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin, and decay. But look for Christ and you will find him, and with him everything else thrown in. I would like to invite everyone to enter into, into prayer at this moment. This prayer is special, to invite the Holy Spirit into our situation and show us the path he has to open in our lives. Lord Almighty God, I come before you with a humble heart and a soul eager for your presence. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that you are the creator of all things, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In your infinite wisdom and power, you have shaped the heavens and the earth and nothing is beyond your reach. I trust that, just as you guided your people through the desert, you will also open paths in our lives. O oh Lord, help us never to lose faith in you. May we always remember that, even in the darkest moments, you are present, working in our favor. Lord, I acknowledge that our struggles and trials are not greater than your grace and your strength. When we are distressed, Father, I cry out for your divine intervention in our lives. May every heart present here be touched by your Holy Spirit, receiving peace, comfort, and the assurance that you are the Lord of all and everyone. Your mighty hand is never incapacitated to make a way. Where there seems to be no way, you are the God who creates paths in the desert and makes streams flow in barren lands. Lord, guide us on the right path. Illuminate our steps with your divine light. May we trust in your perfect timing knowing that your will is always good, pleasing and perfect. May we wait on you with patience, knowing that in your perfect time you will deliver us from suffering and anguish. May our faith in you be unshakable. May we never stop believing in your supreme power. Teach us to rest in your promise and find security in your eternal love. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that all of us may experience your peace that surpasses all understanding that our lives may be living testimonies of your faithfulness and grace. May we be light in the world, reflecting your glory and love to all around us. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. Thank you very much to everyone who watched until the end. I hope you enjoyed our content. May God bless each of your lives. See you in the next video.